I have developed a system for my RC boat after having the boat stop dead in the middle of the pond and in Tom's case his receiver lost a bind and also needed recovery. In this video I'm going to explain my theory of operation and hope you can glean some information in case you want to try RC boating and do not know the downfalls of an RC boat becoming stranded in the middle of a pond. I'm using and making these modifications to my Rage Black Marlin brush boat but it will work on all boats. Hello folks. Well tonight after much learning curve has happened when you lose your RC boat and the battery quits in the middle of the lake, tonight I'm showing you your genuine emergency survival kit for RC boating. A pocket fisherman and a pole with a hook on it. So let's see how this works. Oh, ho, ho. oh, turned around. Maybe. <laughs> I got it. I think I got it. I need my pole. <laughs> How's that? Who says the pocket fisherman isn't handy? It casts better than most people would think. Well, in case the pocket fisherman or the stick doesn't work, it would also be a good idea to take along an air mattress. <laughs> and next, I'm going to show you my battery alarm and backup battery device for adding double time to the boat run times. Okay, I've used the Shockey diode as I've shown in the diagram I drew here and my test circuit to prove it really works. You may have seen my previous video using the Shockey diode to back up receiver batteries too. It's really a great device. This allows the motor to automatically shift to the highest power battery. If you want to run only one battery, just simply remove the second battery. There's no need to remove the diode. Use the alarm to warn you when the battery reaches the threshold voltage which you set to be when you want to be notified. It'll go off while you're driving the boat. I set mine to 3.8 volts per cell which gives me enough time to drive back to the dock once the thing starts beeping. To put an alarm on there so you know what's going on, on one battery alone I've got this uh, low voltage battery tester. These things are really cool and it'll plug right into your charging jack like this. Okay, and you can set the, by pushing this button, where you want the alarm to go off. Right now there's 411 volts in one and 412 in the other. If I go ahead and set it, see it's 340, 350, 360, 370, 380, or off. The alarm is off there. So I'm going to set it for So when this battery goes lower than the second battery, the Shockey diode seamlessly switches to the higher voltage battery. This speed controller actually has a switch on it, so I don't need the 4.8 battery to run this receiver because it has its own BEC, that's a battery eliminator circuit. I'll show you here, I'll turn this on. 
and receivers now coming on. And if I unplug this, you'll hear it slowed down because this one is a total of um, 4.5 volts. That one has a total of 4.9. So I'm going to unplug the other one. Hear it slow down. So now it's switched back to this battery. So it's just going to switch back and forth to the highest voltage battery automatically. And if it gets too low, the alarm's going to go off. There's still enough to get me back both ways. So here we go. I'm going to turn this on. Now this diode is not even warm. So, uh, this shouldn't even get hot. I'm going to go ahead and bolt it to a little bit of a heat sink though. Uh, with the bolt just in case uh, when I'm running under load. But in the meantime, it's a good safety feature here. I'm going to put it all on the boat so you can see it. Okay, you can continue to run a single source battery just like this, or just pop in the second battery. There's the connector right, right here. So it's real easy to pop that in there, but if you just want to run one battery and you have the alarm on here, you can run this one too, see? And yes, it works on electric airplanes too. So we got that alarm now. If I want to add the second battery, real easy. All I have to do is set this in here like this on the Velcro and plug in the two uh, wires. And then that's plugged in. Now I have two batteries running through the diode. These will both switch back and forth, and when both alarms come on, I would land. Uh, didn't seem to slow my boat down any at all, that little bit of extra weight. Emergency backup. Well, I'm working it as hard as I can here in the turns. It won't go as fast, of course, in turns, but uh, this is to test the diode, make sure it doesn't overheat or burn out. So far, so good. Total lapse time, 19 minutes, 22 seconds. Okay, you hear that battery beeping? 
that means time to bring it in. I'd say that was a success. Okay, it's easy enough to run just one battery. These batteries are uh, 15C, only 1500 milliamp. I'm going to plug in a uh, 1800 milliamp 45C, which means this thing should crank a lot better. And uh, I can still use the same connector on here for the uh, device. Um, just got those. And again, if you want to double your runtime, just pop in the second battery. You've already got the diode in there. You can just plug that in. And you've got everything ready to go. Pretty uh, good, and that doubles your runtime. And you've got your two warnings that will go off. So I'll put the uh, 1800 mil 45C versus 15C. This thing should have a whole lot more uh, oomph to it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on now just to show you. That battery is a higher voltage than this one, so this one will be the one that will be running. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Please stay tuned for the next run out on the lake as I race my full-size ski boat with FPV to boot.